So today we're going to deep dive into very important concept in statistics that is process capability. What is this CP, CPK, PP and PPK? We look at all these terms in this video with the help of some animated video examples. So please stay tuned. Don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Before we understand the process capability, let us understand the process. In simple terms, process is a series of action or steps performed on input to produce an output. Let's take an example describing the process of making a cup of tea. From input side, we have electric kettle filled with water. Then we process this called a brewing by adding tea and allowing water to boil in electric kettle. An output could be in the form of we pouring the tea into the cup. This is a very simple input output process diagram. Please remember almost every process can be divided into input process and output. Now let us understand the process capability. So process capability refers to an inherent ability of a process to produce similar parts for sustained period of time under the given set of condition. That is the definition of process capability. But before determining the process capability, we need to make sure the process is stable. That means the variations observed is only due to the common cause only and no special cause of variation exists. And the process is predictable and consistent over time. But if the process is unstable, it might exhibit certain shift trends or cycle, making it difficult to assess its process capability. Second is if the data is normally distributed. This means that the process follows a normal distribution, which we also known as the bell curve. If the data collected from the process doesn't fit a normal distribution, it might indicate that the process is not predictable or consistent making it difficult to assess its capability accurately. Once the process is both normal and stable, its capability can be evaluated effectively using the various statistical methods such as CP, CPK, PP and PPK. These measures help determine whether the process can consistently meet the specific requirements and whether the adjustment or improvement are necessary. We also need the large number of samples to ensure accurate and reliable assessment. So in process capability, we use two indices, CP, CPK, PP and PPK to determine whether the process is capable or not. So CP and CPK are called process capability matrix, while the PP and PPK are called process performance matrix. In both these cases, we want to verify if the process can meet the customer requirement, that is CTQ. So process capability CP and CPK uses samples for evaluation and are generally short terms and tell us how the process will perform in the future. While PP and PPK uses the population and are generally long term and tell us how the process has performed in the past. So CP and PP measures how well the data fits the specification limit that is upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. While CPK and PPK measures how centered the data is between the specification limit. Now let us understand this concept of CP, CPK, PP and PPK using some animations. Imagine that you are driving a car and trying to park the car in the parking space. The parking space here represents the specification limit, upper specification limit and the lower specification limit. And the car that you have, its outer dimension represents the control limit, upper control limit and the lower control limit. So we cannot change the specification limit because these are derived from the customer directly. What we can control is the control limit. That is the upper control limit and the lower control limit. So let's take the first case when the car dimension, upper control limit and the lower control limit are small and car can be easily parked inside the parking space. So that means your specification limit is larger than your control limits. The other scenario in same situation could be when the car is off-centered. Even though it is small, but it is off-centered. That is, it is likely shifted to one side of the walls, which is equivalent to producing a defective part. So our goal here is to make sure the car is narrower and also well-centered. Now, second case could be when the car size is almost equal to the parking space. That means the specification limit is same as the control limit. For this, you either need an expert driver to park your car without hitting the side walls and also to do that consistently for next probably 30 days or 60 days, but not for a normal driver. So we will be producing parts at risk every day. 
So some parts may go out of specification, some parts will still be within the specification limit. So this is kind of a risky scenario. The third case could be when the car is too wide, it won't even fit in the parking space. That means your control limits are actually wider than the specification limit. In this scenario, you will be producing parts which are always out of the spec and won't be accepted by the customer. Let's understand some more scenarios like this case where we have the specification limit. So the driver here is unsteady. Car often scraps the wall and you will see it will produce more defective parts unless the process width is reduced and the process is centered. So in this case, CP is equal to 0.7 and CPK is around 0.7, which is not a capable process. Second case could be when the your driver is still unsteady, but it is better than what was in the case one. He often comes too close to the boundaries, the specification limits, right? And uh, you are likely to have defect unless the process width here is also reduced. So here the CP and CPK is though one, but I would call it as a barely capable because there's always a risk of hitting the side walls. Third case could be when the driver is still unable to center the car, but he is consistent always too close to one side. And in this case, it is the lower specification limit. You are likely to have a defect unless the process is centered. In this case, your CP could be 1.5 because it is still very narrow, but CPK is 0.7 because it is shifted towards the lower specification limit. The fourth case, and again, it is not capable. The fourth case could be when the driver always parks successfully without scrapping the sides. The process is centered as well and narrow. You are unlikely to have defects even if the process shifts slightly to the other side. This is the best case where CP is 2 and CPK is also close to 2. And this is the highly capable process. The CP of 2 means a Six Sigma process. Let's uh, look at some formulas to calculate CP and CPK. So the, for CP, uh, the formula is upper specification minus lower specification divided by process width. That is Six Sigma. That is ULSL plus LSL divided by Six Sigma. For CPK, it is distance from mean to the nearest specification limit divided by distance from the mean to the process edge. So it is in short, it is the min of uh, X bar that is the average minus lower specification limit divided by three sigma or upper specification limit minus X bar divided by three sigma. So this is how you calculate the CP and CPK. So let's take a first example to understand this concept. A process has a mean of 45.5 and a standard deviation of 0.9. The product has a specification of 45 plus minus 3 point the CP and CPK. So this is the scenario. So this is how we plot in the graph. So we need to calculate the lower specification limit and the upper specification limit, which comes from the 45 plus minus 3. We calculate lower and upper specification. Mean here is slightly shifted. Like actual mean from specification is 45, but the actual process mean is 45.5. Now let's see the formula for CP is lower upper specification minus lower specification limit divided by six sigma and cpk is min of mean minus lower specification limit by three sigma or upper specification limit minus mean divided by three sigma so whichever is less is your cpk so for cp let's put the values 48 which is coming from 45 plus 3 and 42 is coming from 45 minus 3 the specification limit which is given the question divided by 6 into 0.9 so we get cp as 1.11 now for CPK, uh, we put the values min as 45.5 is the process mean which is given minus 42 which is the lower specification divided by 3 into 0.9 or 48 is the upper specification minus 45.5 divided by 3 into 0.9. So we get CP as min of 1.3 or 0.93. So we choose the minimum value out of these two. So out of which minimum is 0.93. So CPK is 0.93. That means it is shifted towards the one side. So which is not capable. So we need for process to be capable, we need both CP and CPK greater than one. In this case, even though CP is greater than one, but CPK is less than one. So process is not capable. However, by adjusting the mean, if you can shift the mean, process can become capable here. Let's take a second example. Process has a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of two. The product has a lower specification limit of 58 and upper specification limit of 82. Now you need to find CP and CPK here. So this is the scenario, like you have given the lower specification and upper specification we mean at 70. For CP, the formula is again, upper specification limit minus lower specification limit divided by six sigma. We put the values, we get CP as two. 
let's calculate now cpk which is mean of mean minus lower specification divided by 3 sigma or upper specification minus mean divided by 3 sigma we put the values we get cp as mean of 2 or 2 which is actually same so we get cpk as 2 here so in this case we can say the process is highly capable because both cp and cpk are greater than 1 and actually it is 2 so it is equivalent to 6 sigma process now let's assess the brief knowledge check on this concept if you are still tuned in remember to hit the subscribe button and press the bell notification for all the updates from digital e-learning it is actually completely free for you but your supports motivate me to create more such content in the future additionally please remember to hit the like button share this video with all your friends and across different social media platforms and feel free to share any suggestions or comments that you have in the comment box below read the questions and leave your answers in the comment section below first question which of the following indices measures the potential capability of a process to produce product within the specification limit? CP, CPK, PP, and PPK. Question 2. Which process capability index provides a measure of how well the process can produce within the specification limit, taking into account both variability and centering? CP, CPK, PP, and PPK. Question 3. Which process capability index solely assess the spread of process output? CP, CPK, PP, and PPK. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.